Hello viewers and welcome to a new STM32 World video. A few videos ago uh, I started uh, showing how to read and write data to an I2C device and um, I promised to continue this video series but I've been sidetracked uh, a bit partly because I got bored with it, uh, it's, I'll admit that, uh, but let's look at the status. We were reading from a BMP085 sensor and in the last video we got to a point where we were reading the calibration data by reading from a specific register in the device, the calibration address, and we were reading those data into a raw buffer uh, of um, 22 bytes. Uh, if we look inside uh, the data sheet for the BMP, you can see the data is on different addresses, but we just read continuously 22 bytes into this buffer, and then from those raw values, uh, we were building up this calibration data struct as described in the manual. The struct basically contains, I don't know what they mean, it's not explained in depth in the data sheet. It doesn't matter, it's just the values that is needed to calibrate. Now, in this video we will try to read the temperature from this sensor. It's got both a temperature and a pressure sensor built in. And you can see we read the calibration data from the EEPROM straight away, but to read the temperature value, it's a little more tricky because we need to write a value into a certain register, then we need to wait and we read from another register, we read the values. And you can see later, if we read the uncompensated pressure value, we will write another value into that same register that we used up here. And uh, then we'll read from the same register, we'll read some values uh, back in. So you could say that this register is a command register, so F4. So, and we write some commands into this and then we read from a data register. So not having to remember all those values, typically what I'll do, and I started that last time already, um, is to put these into some defines and the first two we could write into the defines is hang on these two right so we have a calibration address where we fetch the calibration data we have a command address and we have a data address and then we have some commands uh, we can write into those registers and we should create a define for those as well. So we have a re read temperature command, which was 2e. Write 2e into the command register and write 34 into the command register. So now we have some, some data, uh, some, some, some addresses and values defined in the that we can use later in our software. Now we created a calibration data function. Now let's try to make a read temperature. Function. Uh, and well, you can see the previous one we used, we used a buffer of 22. In this case, we only need the two bytes. So we can basically copy, we can copy this one and do uh, copy that one, but we only need two bytes. And in order to read, we need to, up here we were just reading from the EE prompt in the device, but in this case we actually need to write some data first and we can use the same buffer for reading and writing. So we can set buffer zero to, see we need to write that 2e and that was, we defined that as the read temperature command. So we can set this read 
read temperature command. Now we can write that buffer, the first byte of that buffer, to the uh, I2C device. So we can do uh, if, sorry, if L I to C mem write. And as you can see, it takes a lot of parameters, but most of these we can actually reuse. So up here, we know that that one is the i 2 c 2 The device address is, oh, we can copy that from up here. It's exactly, oh, we, no, one at a time. We copy this, which is our device address again, shifted uh, left by one bit. And the memory address that we need to uh, write to is the, we call that command address. All right. The memory address site, like the last time, is one, and the data is, we can copy this up here, um, because this is defined as an array buffer, it needs the cast to function proper, and we sent one byte, and, uh, well, let's steal the hell max delay from up here. And as usual, we will not really do any error handling, but if that is different than hell okay, we'll drop into the error handler. We'll just fail completely in this case. So this should be the first step of reading the temperature data. Now, as instructed by the data sheet, now wait four and a half milliseconds. I'll be generous and do a hell delay. You know I hate delays, but uh, I'll wait for five milliseconds for this temperature sensor to settle. And then we can basically read the values from, we can copy that straight from up there because it, now we memory read, we read from the data address not the calibration address. So we define this as a data address and we don't read 22 bytes, we read two bytes. That should basically be it. And if we ever survive this far, we should now have a 16-bit uh, temperature, uncompensated temperature value, which is the MSB plus the LSB, so we can, rather than doing this, we can do an, we can return a value, and then down here we can simply return, uh, we take a buff zero, zero, shift it left by eight bit plus buff one. That should basically be our read temperature uh, value. So uh, let's go down to our loop down here in our main loop here and say uh, we do a 16t raw temp equals read temperature. Now we should have our raw temperature and we can say ut equals, that is just the percent D and print the raw temp. Let's see if that builds. And it did. Let's try to run it and see what happens. Yeah. And there you can see we get a UT of 28, 29,000. Let's just do a simple sanity check and look at the example uh, they did in the data sheet and they come up with a UT of 27,000, which in their case is equivalent to 15 degrees. Uh, you can 
trust me on this, my office is considerable hotter than that. Uh, I don't know if I mentioned this before, but I live in the tropics and I hate aircon, so I don't have aircon in my office, I have a fan. Typically, there's about 28 to 29 degrees in my office when I'm working. Um, so, that's it. We now have the raw temperature. Let's go through the calibration of this to get our true temperature. We can do that down in the same loop. We get the raw temperature and then let's do the calibration down here. Uh, and we just follow, essentially follow the formula that we have here and turn in to see here it will look like this we get our we get some new data uh, x1 x2 b5 that is calculated based on the temperature and the uh, the, the the calibration data and it's quite a complex formula but i mean it, it is manageable and then we should be able to down here say our t equals now that is a long uh, unsigned integer so we could call it temp uh, doesn't matter let's try to run this if it didn't run <laughs> what is wrong Uh, I didn't call it UT, I call it raw. Okay, let's call it UT. So, UT. Oh, that should work. Okay, uh, let's try to run it. So, let's look at the data sheet again. So, the temperature in 0 0.1 degrees uh, so essentially what it is printing out here is I have right now have 29.1 degrees uh, where this one is running just to illustrate that this is in fact uh, running and working uh, I have a bottle of uh, it's actually contact cleaner but because contact cleaner evaporates really quick it gets really cold so let me try to spray a little contact cleaner on the back of this board i did that just there and you can see the temperature drops dramatically down to 16.7 degrees and then it should start going up again as the contact cleaner evaporates and there we go so this is how you read data and write data because we needed to do both in uh, the read temperature we write data to an address and essentially some i2c sensors are better documented than others and i deliberately picked this bmp085 because it was reasonably well documented uh, but uh, all i2c sensors are the same you write some data to it, you read some data from it, and it's just a matter of reading the data sheet and following exactly what it says. Now, I plan in a future written, normally you would never have this in the main C, you would turn that into a library. And uh, in fact, I have uh, done so uh, up here, and it is committed, so if you want to see how that is done, uh, you can do that. I have not made a video yet, uh, but I will make that video. Uh, I'm not sure whether it will be the next video. I'm a little bored with this, and I have some ideas for other videos. Um, but uh, I will make a future video that describes primarily how to make a, a C library in uh, STM32 Cube ID. Uh, which is a different topic in itself, but I'll probably use this. So essentially take these functions out and make it into a proper portable library that can be used for different things. But the basics are here. As usual, I will commit this to my JIT so you can get the code from the JIT. And uh, that's about it. 
Uh, I hope you enjoyed this video and if you did, please, please, please like and subscribe down below. Uh, as usual, I love comments, so um, post comments. If you spot a mistake I made, let me know. If you have further questions to it, let me know. I'll answer. I will either answer in the comments or I might decide to make a video with the answer. You will see that um, I, I had a crazy problem um, mystery in one of the last videos and I have solved that mystery and I will make a video about that. As usual, have a wonderful rest of the day.